Jeff Douglas with Appear and Cloudsbooks here, and I'm going to walk you through a Node application that uses the streaming API to actually listen for records that are created in Salesforce so you can process them externally. So let's say, for instance, every time you had a new opportunity created in Salesforce, you wanted to move that record into SAP or sometime a, a contact information is updated, you want to move it to another system. So you basically want to get that record out of Salesforce so that way you can process it externally. So instead of polling every so many minutes to check and see if new values are there, you can use the streaming API and it'll send you these records every time a new record is created. Is it for you automatically in real time? So we'll walk through that use case. It's pretty powerful to use it for different things, processing data, sending external email. There's a lot of different use cases that you can use for this. I'll show you the basics, that way you can set it up and use it on your own orgs, okay? So the first thing we wanna do here, we're gonna go here and look through this GitHub repo. So I've got some instructions here on how to do this. First thing we're gonna do is talk about what the dependencies are. So what are we using for this app? So we're using Express, which everybody loves Express. We're using the Enforce package by Kevin O'Hara. It's an awesome little package. It's a, basically a REST wrapper around Enforce.com API. It makes it really easy to use. We're gonna use Jade for our template engine, but there's not much there, so we're not gonna use a whole bunch of it. We're gonna use Fay, and Fay is a pub sub protocol based on the Bayou. So that's going to be talking to the streaming API on the node side. And then we're going to use um, Socket.io to actually push some, some, I guess, the names of the accounts to um, the browser. So now we need to go and set up this uh, remote access in Salesforce. If you don't know how to set up a remote access to get your OAuth tokens, I have a video, um, Salesforce Primer, about 445. You can see that. Here's our OAuth reused, our callback. So let's go ahead and go to the setup here. We'll find the remote access. And now we're gonna go ahead and create one. I've actually already done that, so I'm gonna just gonna show you how to do that, let it propagate through. So I just give it a name, and here's the callback URL you just saw a second ago in the repo. That's what it's gonna use for the Enforce to call back. And these are your OAuth tokens, your key and your secret. You're gonna need those in a second here, so we're gonna copy those here. I'm gonna kind of keep these hidden for you. So next thing we need to do is we need to create a push topic in Salesforce. The push topic is actually the streaming API. It's actually a record that they're going to create called the push topic. So this is the code to do it right here. It's pretty much boilerplate. It just has the API version and the query. So we're going to go ahead and do that in the um, developer console. So let's open that up here. Let me resize it for a second here. It's pretty big. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get the execute anonymous here. So you see I already had this code in here once. I'm just going to use this code. I'm going to expand this a little bit. And now when I execute this, it's going to create a record, which is basically the push topic. You can also do this in the workbench, which is really cool because it gives you some more information in the workbench. So I'm going to double click on this, and then we can see just to make sure that this record was created OK. Let me find this. There we go, new push topics created. OK, there's our new record. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is let's go back over here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to run this application locally. Now, this before we do that, I want to talk about this real quick here. So this is pretty much boilerplate code that you use. I've got a little bit of tweaking here I need to do on the text here, but uh, more or less copy and paste that in there. Now, what I want to mention again is the workbench. Workbench is really, really cool. You can also run it from here. It can be a lot of debugging information. So to run this locally, what we're going to do is we're going to actually clone this from GitHub. So there's my URL. I'm going to use the clone. We open up Terminal paste in there and it's going to go ahead and download all that to my local directory I'm going to switch that directory and let's open this up in sublime text all right so here is my directory of the files in there you can see it download all these files here I got a public style sheet some simple routes and views um, basic express project so what we're going to do is we're going to go over this here and see what we need to do to get this up and running. So what's created is not that much different than any other project you have with Node. So we're going to go back over here and we're going to see what you have to do to actually get your OAuth tokens in there. So we've set up the config part. There's a config file in here that you're going to paste your OAuth tokens into. So here you go. It's just standard settings we need to have for the um, Enforce package. You can see we have our push topic right there, and these are our client secrets that we have, an ID that we have, and then our username and password. This uses the OAuth2 flow, I'm sorry, the OAuth username and password flow for the Enforce package, so we're going to use that. I'm going to pause this real quick here and put my stuff in. All right, so now I'm done. I've got my config parameters in here. This is our main file at .js. Um, there's the index, which has some 
super boilerplate stuff in there in our views. We have our index page, which has a little bit of text, and then a layout, which we're gonna do most of our work at. So let's see, we'll go here. Let's look at let's look at the package.json. So package.json has the information what packages, what dependencies are used for this project. So we need to install these now. So we're gonna go ahead and go back to our terminal. And we're gonna type npm install. It's gonna download all those required dependencies locally so that way we can use those. It's kind of like a gem file or a package. Just a way to package up node code and install that locally. And let's see, it takes a minute, we're gonna build these things here. All right, so there we go. So now we got everything downloaded. Let's go back and take a look at these real quick. You can see there's all the files that we downloaded. All right, so now if we go back and take a look at what we need to do next, we just installed, we just ran npm install. So now we're gonna go ahead and start the server up. So you type node.app.js, get your server listening, and here's you see all authenticating to Salesforce right here. There's listening to Socket.io, authenticating the Salesforce, get the token. There's the OAuth dance where it brings back our access token right here. And you can see that it created a client for, uh, for Comet D, which is Bio Protocol. And then it subscribes to that topic, we mean that push topic. And then you can see some debug information here about the handshakes. All right, so let's fire this thing up. So here we go. So we're at, we're at localhost 3001. Let's go back over here into Salesforce real quick here. And we're gonna kind of move these around so you can see these a little better. We're gonna go ahead and create an account and watch it populate on the screen using Socket.io. So it's kind of magical. It creates that connection in the browser without with using Socket.io so you can push things back and forth to the browser without page refreshes. It's super slick. So before I say this, let me open turn up you can see kind of how this flows through. All right, so take a look at the browser in the background and then the terminal, let me hit save. You can see that, boom, it streamed that record. You can see in the terminal there, and then you can, of course, see it pop up over in the browser also. There's my test account, and there's my test account in the browser. So the Node app caught that record coming out of Salesforce, and then it pushed that text to the browser using Socket.io. So let's go do one more just to show you again real quick. Create another one. There you go. Boom, it streams that to the client and it writes that using Socket.io to the browser. Okay, so let's take a look at this main app.js file and see how this works. So you see the first part here up top, we're basically just including all of our dependent packages. This is where Express creates the server. Now we're creating an IO object and we're attaching Socket.io and we're listening for this app for any events. And then we create a socket reference so we can write to the socket and, and push that text basically to the browser. And here's where we're mounting our phase server. So this is connects to the bio protocol, which of course talks to the push topic on Salesforce. And then our Enforce package actually at this point does the connection to Salesforce and returns our OAuth token. We'll look at that in a second here. Here's some standard express configuration. Here's our one route that we have. And then here's where we go ahead and get our OAuth token. You can see the callback it's right here when it's done process it makes a call back to the function so it authenticates passing over the username and password if there's no error it's going to call back with this access token and this is where it kicks everything off so when the server starts the first thing it's going to do is actually call get OAuth token which authenticates so it'll, it'll call this right here it'll actually create an endpoint and that's to the comment D for that instance URL it's going to create a client so we can talk to the face server and then it's going to add the access token to our header so we can authenticate correctly to force.com and then if we're going to monitor if the connection ever goes down and we're going to reset that so we're going to you know authenticate again and add the OAuth token and then here's where we actually start listening for new events coming in from Salesforce so you can see we are subscribed to the upstream and then we start listening so once a new event comes through you can see we're just gonna output this to the log, the message of it. We're gonna, once we catch that event, we're gonna actually emit a new record process event to Socket.io, and we're gonna pass over the message. So this is the point where we actually have our record that we wanna process externally. And at this point, we can start doing things to it. You know, whatever, whatever you wanna do with this external record, send it to an external system, 
email it, push it to another, you know, another SAP, another Salesforce instance, whatever you want to do with that right here. Now there are some limits on push topics. I think there's now 10,000 messages per day. And I think there's only 10, um, 10 channels you can connect to, but I, I've heard the grapevine that those limits are going to be increased soon. So let's go ahead and take a look real quick at what happens when you emit this. So when we get this record, how does this get sent to our browser over here? So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the layout. Everything comes to this index page, which of course calls this, and this is the index file itself. But everything is done in the layout. So we're going to look at this layout real quick here. And this is Jade. Looks a little different. Um, so you see we have our style sheet in here for every page. We're going to include jQuery, and we're going to include our socket IO JavaScript file. And then we're going to create a socket object, and that's basically a connection to this URL. So localhost port 3001. It's a, a two-way HTTP socket connection back and forth from the server to that URL. And so now we're going to list it for the uh, event record process event. It's going to pass over this data, which is you know our record name coming out of Salesforce. It's going to grab this results, which is going to be a string. We're going to parse it into JSON. We're going to log that. And then we're also going to go ahead and push this to um, the browser with some jQuery, you're just going to include the results, the S object name. So we're going to do that. So, so that's a quick little app that you can use and push records from Salesforce to external systems that are run externally, but you don't have to pull for them back and forth. So you don't have to set up an, an instance of where you have something scheduled to basically make a SQL query into Salesforce to check for new records and then process them externally. Salesforce is going to send you these records out whenever they're created. So hope that helps you um, when your application. Uh, have a great one. There we go. So it's a pretty simple way. Now that you have that, you can do almost anything you want with it. You basically caught that record, and now you can push it to an external system. So let's go back and look at how this code works here. So everything happens in the app.js. Let me 
resize this. So here's where we actually require all dependencies. And then we basically create our, our Express server, require Socket.io and attach it and start listening for events on our server. We create a, a, a reference to Socket.io so that way we can write back to it. And there's where we create our Bayou server. We attach it, we mount it at comment D, and then we start listening for things in the app. And here's our connection for Salesforce. This is the Enforce package. It essentially just gives us an OAuth token here. Some boilerplate configuration for Express. And this is our route. We only have one page or a root page. And then we're just listening for some stuff here. We de debug there. And this is where we actually get to the meat of things here. So this is where we get our OAuth token. You can see it just authenticates and returns a token. And this is actually the method that kicks everything off. It says, get the OAuth token. You can see it establishes the endpoint. It writes some debug stuff here. It sets up the client for that endpoint. It adds the OAuth token to the headers. And then it actually starts subscribing to Salesforce. So you can see at this point right here, we actually have our record. It came through, it came as the upstream client. And you've got the record here, it's called message. You push messages through here. And we're writing that message as a string to our browser. And here we got some just some debugging and remove if you want to want to see that here. So, so that's a quick um, overview of how we can use this to, uh, to push events to Salesforce.